It is that filter that has the biggest impact to your composition, even to your story. And I'm sure most landscape photographers experienced up from their beginnings quite similar situations that there were any experienced or more experienced photographers who told them use a circular polarizer to get rid of the reflections or that the sky gets more popping out or also to get the, the foliage up on the trees more saturated and it got totally confusing when they added something like but don't screw too much or don't use too much of polarization because this will ruin your photos because what no one tells you is how much of polarization you actually need. My friends, I'm always honest with you, it took me so many years to get this tiny thing managed, but it was so simple and it has such a big impact to the photographs. No secrets anymore, I will reveal everything about how much of polarization you really need here now in this video. Hi my friends, very nice to see you. I'm going to show you four different use cases of how circular polarizers can be used and how I get sure to get the right amount of polarization in each case to get out a photograph with a better quality. But to understand better why I'm doing it exactly in that way, first of all, let's have a quick look what the circular polarizer actually does. I'm not going into detail, just a quick excursion to physics, quick and simple, just to explain the principle. Well, you know, light moves through the space as a form of wave. If you change the distance between the beaks, we get the light in another color. And the higher the beaks get, the brighter the light gets. But there is even more of information inside light. So let's imagine that we would look at the wave from the side, so from the left here for instance. So we would see this axis here just as a point obviously, and we see the wave itself just as a vertical line in this case that goes up and down. But it is not only up and down possible, the wave could also have a totally other angle, maybe like this here or, or even like this. So it is a kind of 3D wave and also a spiral is possible by the way, then it would look like a circle here obviously. And now when there goes light, what is a wave obviously, when there goes light through a circular polarizer, we can filter out the information from specific angles. So a circular polarizer does nothing more than just limiting the possible angles here from our wave. We polarize the light. And important here is that we screw here in our polarizer. So this allows us to yeah, just to adjust the angle of, of the light we wish to get through so that we can yeah, filter out the unwished angles and we can get a better quality on our photographs. But just if we decide for the right amount of polarization. So let me show you four different use cases in photography where a circular polarizer can help you and how I managed to get the right amount of polarization for each one. Well, where I use a circular polarizer quite often is wet surfaces, wet rocks for instance. Let's take this wet stone here as example. Usually we want that the light that defines the stone would go straight to the center of our camera so that we get a sharp and clear structure on it. This light what hits the center is also just a reflection of course. Let's call this one the alpha reflection. That's the one we want. It contains all the information about the stone itself. But as the stone is wet, the light from all directions is reflected as well, but on the surface of the water that is sitting on the stone. Let's call this one the beta reflection. So the alpha reflection is the one from the stone itself. The beta reflection is that from the water on the stone. And this beta reflection disturbs our alpha reflection, obviously. The information of the stone itself gets overlaid a bit by the beta reflection, the glare. And this ends up that all the structures and the textures of the rock get hidden. And again, let's imagine each light, each reflection is a wave with a different angle. So the alpha reflection has another angle than the beta reflection. It is a bit more complicated in reality, but it shows the principle quite well. So when we screw here now on our circular polarizer, we can block more or less from our beta reflection. And in most cases you could get rid of nearly the whole glare, but be careful here, this is not what we want. And I will tell you why. Really, really, really important. Well. 
the layer itself is not generally bad because when we break it down, in most cases it, it can even be a quite important part of our story. I mean, the stone is wet in reality and this wetness adds to our story. And so what I do is I try to keep as much clear as possible but as less as necessary. This might sound confusing but yeah, it really nails it. Again, as much clear as possible but as less as necessary. But let me explain you. This means I screw to a position to get enough information from the rock itself, but not more. Let the clear life, it tells a story. And when we look at this image here, I decided for a polarization level to get rid of most of the glare, but I wanted anyway to have a tiny bit of glare here so that we get a fantastic contrast to the surrounding rocks. And here another example, where I even didn't use a polarizer, although I photographed a waterfall with lots of wet rocks. And the reason therefore is simply that there was no disturbing glare in the scene. As there was a little bit of mist back there, the glare from the rocks up there, that, that shines through the mist even supports the story. You see, it totally depends on the scene and the story you want to tell. And finally we can say, screw to that position that keeps enough information from the particular elements, but keep also enough information from the glare. Another really fantastic usage for a circular polarizer is foliage up on trees. Yeah, it is a must filter for each woodland photographer. And it works in the same principle, in the same way as with wet rocks, of course. The information of the leaves is disturbed by the reflection of the water on it, the glare. And what I always consider is when I'm using a circular polarizer is I try different polarization levels and how they impact the visual weight in my composition. If there's too much glare um, on a particular area of my composition, it would draw the viewer's eyes to that position. I mean, this could be good, but it could also ruin the flow of your image. This is uh, how the viewers go through your image, the flow. So ask yourself, do you want the rock or, or the batches of foliage or whatever, do you want them as an eye-catching element? Does this support to your composition or does it distract? And this brings me finally to give either less or more polarization, whatever my goal for the particular composition is, wherever I want my viewers looking to. And this has also an impact on the balance of your composition, by the way. So if there's too much glare on the left side of your frame, for instance, but not all too much on the right, it could bring your composition out of balance and it could also lead into a disbalance with your story. And I made already a video about composition where I go a little bit more into detail on balance. I will link it up, up here for you so that you can watch it after this video. Well, when we look at this image here, I used a quite high amount of polarization. I wanted the foliage a bit more popping out due to more saturation. But I wanted to keep this nice flow to this clearing back there. If there were glare on the foliage or too much glare, the contrast between the foliage and the clearing were not high enough. The flow would not work that well. And this is why I tried to get rid of most of the glare here. And here another example of this nice late spring woodland scene. The glare on the leaves adds even more plasticity and in the distance it supports the glowing of the foliage up on these bushes. What leads us back to the vanishing point. And this is why I decided to use just a tiny bit of polarization. The glare draws the viewer's eyes exactly there where I want to have them, back to the vanishing point. And the plasticity up on the foliage, up on the frame, supports the depth in this scene. Too much polarization would turn this scene here more into a flat and boring one. My friends, just for the case that you liked this video, I were really happy about a thumb up. It would simply help me to make this video accessible to more landscape photographers out there. So thank you therefore. You can also use a circular polarizer to get the sky popping out a bit more, to get more saturation into the sky. This is used by so many landscape photographers, but to be honest, I use this quite rarely because I, I don't want to get too much of energy into my skies. I want to have my visual weight more to those areas where they really add to the composition. And there are some exceptions, especially to hazy skies maybe. You can reduce the amount of haze with a circular polarizer obviously, but usually I see a polarized sky more as a downside in most cases. Yeah, that's my personal experience. So if anyone out there likes polarizing skies, there's nothing bad with it. Just consider not to get too much of visual weight into your sky. This could really distract from your really important things in your composition. 
So when we have a look at this example here, at this photograph, I photographed a red sky and it looks amazingly saturated, right? But I had even to desaturate it quite a lot afterwards in post processing because it got simply too much. I got too much saturation due to the polarization. So always be careful when you polarize skies or at least reduce the saturation afterwards in post processing. Another really important use case of using a circular polarizer is the water surface of lakes, rivers and so on. Yeah, we can use a circular polarizer to reduce the visual weight at the positions of the glare obviously or also to make elements below the surface a bit more visible and yeah, when I, when I think about it, uh, this is also the reason why I have the sunglasses here. They are polarized, so when I'm driving with my car or with my van or whatever, the bottles on a rainy day don't distract me from driving. Yeah, I mean, it's the same principle. And I also use it for landscape photography, by the way. When I'm walking at the shore of a lake, for instance, it's quite good when you're able to look a little bit through the surface of the water. It can really help you to find outstanding foreground elements. And I think it's just 15 euros or something like that. So if you're interested, I will link you down in the description. So, however, let's come back to photography and how to polarize the surface of the water. So, very important here is don't overdo it, especially if you want to have a reflection on the surface of the water, maybe a nice mountain reflection or something like that. Because too much of polarization will also reduce your nice mountain reflection. So what I do is I screw exactly to that position where I get still enough reflection of the mountain, but also details from the elements below the surface of the water, if they add to my story. I think this yeah, that's the most important question. So in this image here, we get not only this nice mountain reflection, we also get the clouds nicely reflected here behind this plant. And this brings more contrast onto the plant, we get it better isolated. So what really adds here to the composition, we still have enough glare back there on the surface of the water, what ends up in, in the visual weight back there, and this really supports nicely this flow of our composition. Yeah, we are simply drawn to this area. But when you look at this image here, I saw this awesome dead wood on the ground of the lake. I was able to use them as leading lines, even as vanishing lines in this case, what really adds here to this composition. And it also adds to the story here. So I, I needed a polarization level that polarizes enough to get a definition of the elements below the surface, but not too much to get anyway enough reflection of the mountain back there. So always think about that. Use as less polarization as possible, but as much as necessary. And just for the case that you don't own a circular polarizer, I can highly recommend you. For me, it is even the most important filter. It has an impact you simply can't change afterwards in post-processing, but you don't need the most expensive one. So I tested different polarizers and this one from Valimux here is a quite cheap one and yeah, I have to say it totally competes to the really expensive ones. I use this one most of the time and I'm quite happy with it. So if you're interested, I will leave you a link down in the description. Now friends, I hope you liked this video. If yes, please give me a thumb up and don't forget about your friends. Give them also the chance to look a little bit more through the surface of how to use a circular polarizer and share this video with all of your friends on Facebook or Instagram. I thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see. You are the artist I'll never be. Stay with me and I have no doubt. You'll make a painting that makes you proud.